not even the Pope knows what the AMV is, but I'll give you a hint. It's a Bible and it will replace the English King James Bible version and all other Bible versions for that matter. Why am I sure that His Excellency the Pope does not know what the AMV is? Simply because it has not yet been published. In fact, we are still a few years from an editing committee to be formed, but this does not prevent us from speculating on what changes should be introduced to the AMV and why. Hi, my name is Eric and I investigate all things biblical. So, what is the AMV? Some will call it fiction. I prefer to call it a prophetic and a logical new development. Ezekiel's visions are about the Messianic Kingdom. It's the era that comes after the time of the nations. Jesus spoke about in Luke 21, 24, and which Hosea 6 verse 2 explained would be two prophetic days or 2,000 years followed by the third day, the thousand years of peace. So what does this have to do with the AMV? To explain what the AMV is about, I first need to clarify that the Messianic era is not taught at all, or churches just assume it will be like paradise with a lion and a lamb and so on. But it's not the whole picture. For one, death will still exist. For example, Isaiah 65 says, No more will there be an infant who only lives a few days, or an old man who has not yet filled his days. For the child will die 100 years old, and the sinner, being 100 years old, will be viewed as accursed. Isaiah 2 describes how the nation ceases to make war at the end of days, and come up to Jerusalem to learn about the God of Israel. That made me realize that during the millennium of peace, while Satan is temporarily bound, as we read in Revelation 20 verses 2 to 3, the nations will need a divinely revised Bible version. And that then is what the AMV is. The authorized millennial version or a divinely revised Bible. Just as King James I in 1604 got a team of 47 translators together to revise the Bishop's Bible as a counter to the popular Geneva Bible and in 1611 produced what became known as the King James Version. So the AMV will also be authorized by the Crown, the King of Kings, to replace all other Bible versions. But back to the AMV, let me put it this way. If Yeshua or Jesus would appear to a committee of Bible experts, as he did to the two men going to Emmaus in Luke 24, what corrections and changes would he, as the King of Kings, want to see to the Bible that would be teaching the gospel to the nations unhindered by Satan's agents. First, the covenant and memorial name of God will surely be restored, removing both generic, but especially all substitute names of foreign deities, the Baals in the Bibles of so many languages. Secondly, I think the canon of the scriptures will for sure be changed. For example, the history of the Maccabees for the many miracles and fulfillment of Daniel's prophecies relating to the Jews must be in the Bible. I also think that the wisdom of Sirach deserves a place of honor amongst the wisdom books. Thirdly, I think that obvious scribal errors and duplication of phrases will be removed. Sometimes one little word makes a huge difference like the errant Passover of John verse 4, that should read Shavuot, a feast of the Jews, which has caused chaos with the chronology of Messiah's ministry, making Greek-minded theologians to believe that it was 
three years, when indeed it was closer to 16 months, the year of Jehovah's favor, Isaiah 61 verse 2. Another example is the Apostle Paul's teaching in 1 Corinthians 14 on the spiritual gifts of prophecy and speaking in a tongue, where a scribe in verse 22 mixed the two gifts, making no sense to the point Paul was making. Then fourthly, I think there could be additions to the book of Acts. Acts 2 to teach the history of the early church, the martyrs of the first three or four hundred years until Rome took control of Christianity. Acts 3 could describe the growth of the church up to the Reformation and the current apostasy, shameful as it is, should be told as a warning for the very last generation. How should the AMV end? With a fresh understanding of why Satan will again be released at the end of the Messianic millennium, the final rebellion of his children at the end of the age. Then those who live at that time be raptured to meet their Savior and enter the everlasting age. For as Revelation 10 verse 7 says, the secret of Jehovah shall be ended as he declared to his servants the prophets. Okay, did you find it interesting to think about the future with great hope and not despondency and fear? For more about the vision of victory we should have, like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. In the name of Yeshua, our King and Redeemer, Shalom.